Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen from YRMC. Welcome to YRMC's Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm your host, Rita Carey Rubin. You know, my fondest food memories from childhood involve my mom's all-day spaghetti sauce and my dad's slow-cooked stews. Nothing beats the flavor of a slow-cooked meal. And thanks to a new generation of crock pots, instant pots, and other countertop cookers, slow is easier and more reliable than ever. I have two great recipes to share with you today, a rich vegetable curry and an easy braised chicken with artichokes and olives. But first, here's a quick tip based on a question from a Your Healthy Kitchen fan. So how do I choose the best quality cooking oils among all that are available in the grocery store? This is a great and really important question. So the quality of the fats and the oils we eat strongly affects our health. So first and foremost, look for oils that are stored in dark glass bottles. So oil is really fragile and dark bottles will protect it from damage from light. Also, storing oil in glass bottles is safe while plastic storage definitely is not. Second, look for oils that are cold pressed. So this means that the oil was extracted from olives, seeds, or fruit using temperature controlled presses, thus protecting the oil from being damaged by heat. Sometimes you have to look hard to see if your oil is cold pressed. So some labels it'll say right on the, on the front, some labels it'll, it'll say on the back, there's some description of the oil to say it's been cold pressed. Some oils will also list harvest dates and best used by dates. And that'll help to ensure that your oil is relatively fresh and not damaged by time. And lastly, buy oil in small enough quantities to ensure that you use them up within a few weeks or months and store them in the refrigerator or in a cool cupboard away from heat and light. Okay, well, let's get cooking. The chicken recipe I have for you today comes from Rebecca Katz and her recipe collaborator, Catherine McConkie. I love the work these ladies do together and I think you will love this recipe too. For meat and poultry lovers, slow cooking has huge advantages. It tenderizes leaner and often more flavorful cuts of meat, but it's also the healthiest way to cook all animal proteins. So let's get started. I'm gonna cook the chicken in my Instant Pot using that as a slow cooker first. And the first thing to do when you're gonna use your slow cooker is to heat it up and turn it on. Um, all slow cookers these days you can use to start cooking by doing some basic sauteing of, of aromatic things like onions and garlic. And I actually prefer using my Instant Pot for um, sauteing and, and starting the dishes because it actually heats up faster uh, than a traditional crock pot does. So that, that thin, um, stainless steel liner that's in an Instant Pot gets the heat going faster and it actually makes your slow cooking a little quicker. So I've started the chicken dish and in the Instant Pot over here, you can see I've thrown in some onions and about three tablespoons of olive oil. We could also use avocado oil or ghee. And we're just, just to start sauteing, and I'll also put in some other uh, spices while those onions are cooking. So the recipe calls for about three um, cloves of garlic that are sliced. So we'll throw that in there. And plus the spices. The spices are, are key to this dish. And I have here some ground turmeric, ground coriander, ground cumin some crushed red pepper, a little salt, and some black pepper. And I'll throw that in and give it a stir. And I'll show you what it looks like here. I wish you could smell this. It just smells delicious. So after, I don't know, a few minutes, this will really start to smell fragrant. But I'm gonna cover it up for a minute so it gets cooking a little faster. While that's cooking, you can prepare your chicken. You can also prepare your chicken up to a day ahead of time. So the recipe calls for chicken thighs, 
and to give them a spice rub. That's the same blend of spices that I just put into the Instant Pot. And you can, you can do this uh, uh, the night before. They can actually sit in the fridge for about 24 hours. Um, or while you're waiting for other things to cook or while you're preparing, um, before you're preparing your vegetables, just give the, the chicken a little bit of uh, spice coating and store it in the fridge and it'll be ready to go. One thing to know, if you are cooking chicken in a crock pot, make sure you either use white meat or dark meat, but don't use both because the white meat cooks faster than the dark meat. So you'll have some that's overdone and some that might be underdone. So the, the thighs are, are just dark meat. So I'm going to put these in the crock pot. And it's really simple. All I'm doing is putting the chicken thighs on top of the onions and the spices. Show you what that looks like. So we're really just layering here. The chicken just grows right on top of the onions. And I'll throw in a little bit more flavor. I'm going to throw in a, a bay leaf and also a cinnamon stick. And follow that up with a couple of cups of chicken broth or chicken um, stock. You could use homemade for sure or um, purchased. I really like this brand. It's Pacific Foods. So a couple of cups. And when you know when you're when you're cooking with a crock pot, one thing to be uh, be aware of too is not to overfill your slow cooker. Really, the most you want to fill your, your pot with is it's about two-thirds full. So half to two-thirds full is about all you want. If you go too low, it doesn't cook very well either. And then this is just going to sit here and cook for a couple hours on high. And after, after a couple hours, we'll throw in the rest of the ingredients, which are really simple. It's just some uh, green olives and some quartered artichoke hearts. These are canned. You can also buy frozen. Uh, just buy plain artichoke hearts, not the ones that are seasoned or in oil. So this will go in there. And also about a cup of garbanzo beans. And that's it. And the, the dish can be is real versatile. You could throw other vegetables in there. You could throw some greens towards the end of cooking. You, if you wanted to, you could put potatoes in there. Um, this is what it look like, looks like when it's done. And I like to serve it on top of some rice or potatoes or maybe with a nice flatbread like some, some naan. And uh, it's just a, it's a delicious, rich, nourishing dish. Kind of like a curried chicken soup. So the, my rich and easy vegetable curry uses almost the same spices as the braised chicken, except with the addition of some fresh ginger. But it follows the same technique. So if I was going to do this in the slow cooker, I'd do the same thing, turn on the slow cooker. But I'm going to do it on the stovetop because you can actually make this, you can make this dish on the stovetop as well. So I've got my pot is heated up. I'm going to add some oil. This is avocado oil. And again, you could use olive oil or ghee, coconut oil, onions. So about the same amount of onions throw into the pan. Got a nice sizzle going there. Just stir that around. And while this is cooking, another thing to uh, to look for when you have your slow cooker is, um, you know, all the new ones are are timed, so you can set the t the cooking time, but you can it'll they'll all will go onto uh, a hold. They'll warm. They'll just sit there and warm the food um, after it's done. So you know that's one of the greatest benefits of a slow cooker is you can put it on to cook and you can leave. So I did that the other day. We went out for a hike while we were cooking dinner and it was awesome. Um, another thing with a slow cooker is it really helps to bring out the flavor in food. I don't think there is, there's really anything that can compare. So, so give it a try. 
my onions are cooking. I am going to throw in just a little pinch of salt, which can help break down the onion and bring out the flavor a little bit. I will throw in some chopped garlic. I don't know, three, four, five, six cloves. Depends on how much garlic you like. I'm also going to chop up a little bit of ginger, about a teaspoon's worth. So about maybe a chunk that's about a half, half inch or so. And, and I recommend using fresh ginger for this recipe. Dry ginger just doesn't have the right, the night, the, the same, um, the same heat and the same brightness as fresh ginger does. And you don't have to be crazy with the ginger, just chop it roughly. Give it a stir. And the spices, other than the ginger, are the same, except I'm using whole seed spices for this dish. So I've got some whole cumin, about a half a teaspoon, whole coriander, same amount, some ground turmeric. And turmeric is the, the spice that you find in curry um, that gives it that, that, that orange yellow color. It's also a really powerful anti-inflammatory spice. I'm going to add some black pepper and the black pepper will help the, uh, the anti-inflammatory chemicals in the turmeric be absorbed better in your body. So black pepper and turmeric are a really good combo. And some crushed red pepper. A little bit if you like a little heat, a lot if you like a lot. You could use uh, some, also some whole chilies in this dish. If you have some small chilies or some jalapenos or something that you like to give it a little bit of heat. So just let it cook a few seconds and it smells so fragrant right now. That's really what you're looking for. When things start smelling yummy, it's time to throw in your vegetables. And the veggies I'm using today are just some carrots and some potatoes and some zucchini. And I cut the carrots and the potatoes about the same size because they, they cook a little bit longer than the zucchini does. They're a harder vegetable. And so I will cut my zucchini in slightly bigger chunks. So everything comes out at about the same time. And you can use lots of different vegetables in this curry. Uh, I've made it with green beans, I've made it with bell peppers, I've put cabbage in. Um, gosh, you could just, any kind of green you can throw in. So we'll put these guys in here. And give it a stir. And then I'll cover it with a can of tomatoes. These are some fire roasted diced tomatoes, which add another layer of flavor to the dish, but you could use any kind of diced tomatoes that you like. Throw that in there. Some vegetable broth. And last of all, garbanzo beans. So really similar ingredients to the chicken dish, except for this one's a vegetarian version. And like the chicken dish, you know, serve this up with some cilantro, so you could do sides of lime or lemon. Um, serve it on top of brown rice or with some flatbread like naan. And that's what it looks like. And it's just so warming and delicious and nourishing. Uh, you can also add to this some coconut milk. I like it both with and without coconut milk. So it just really depends on your taste. But it doesn't take much. I'm going to throw in about a half a cup of coconut milk right now. Give it a stir. And one thing coconut milk does is it's going to tame the spices a bit. So if you like coconut milk and you like your curry spicy, you might find that you have to add a little extra spice uh, to get it to the level that you like. So that's it. I hope you dust off that old crock pot. Or better yet, get yourself a new one 
and start to enjoy the pleasures of slow cooking. And also remember to check out all of our videos and our collection of healthy, delicious, and easy recipes at YRMC Health Connect. You can also join me in my kitchen at home by following me on Facebook at YRMC's Your Healthy Kitchen, where you'll see the latest recipes, photos, and videos of the food I make at home, plus links to my favorite food, nutrition, and gardening destinations on the web. So until next time, eat well and be well, and I'll see you soon.